Okay, we're back to talking about tables one more time. So we have a production plan that we need to make 250 tables today. However, we get a bad batch of tops and throughout the day, 20 tops break and we only can make 230 tables. So the first question, how many tables did we actually make? Well, we actually made 230 tables. How many should we have made? Well, we should have made 250 tables. So which means now we can get a percent production or percent yield for how much we're putting out. So we have 230 divided by 250 times 100. And that means we have a 92% production rate. Now, if you understand this, doing the stoichiometry is not much different. So we're going to be calculating a theoretical yield the same way that we've been doing it. And then the actual yield is always going to be given to you. So you're going to have to identify the actual yield from the information given in the problem. The first example on the next page is um, antimony sulfide reacts with iron. The theoretical yield is 65 grams. However, 50 grams are actually produced. We want to know what the percent yield is. Well, what I recommend you do as you go through these problems is there's usually going to be two numbers given. Highlight or circle which one you think the actual yield is. So because it says 50 grams are actually produced, that's our actual yield. We are not going to use that number until the end. So I'm going to set up the problem and I'm going to put 50 over whatever my theoretical yield is going to be times 100. Now we look at the problem and it says 65 grams is the theoretical yield. So it's pretty easy because the theoretical yield is already given to us. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this theoretical yield. I'm going to put it here under my actual yield, do 50 divided by 65, and I get a percent yield of 76.9%. This last example is a little bit more involved than the one before because we have to calculate the theoretical yield. So let's again read the problem and let's identify what information is given. So we have five grams of silicon dioxide heated with an excess of carbon. 3.22 grams of silicon carbide is produced. We wanna know the percent yield. Well, first let's identify the percent, the actual yield. 3.22 grams of silicon carbide is produced. That's our actual yield because it's saying what is produced. It also says that it's reacting with excess carbon. So let's remember what excess carbon means. Excess just means I have plenty carbon to react with all of the silicon dioxide. So for the purposes of the math, we don't need it. We can cross it off. So the only thing I have left, five grams of silicon dioxide, that's our starting point. So we have to set up exactly what we've been doing all along. We have to start with five grams, convert to moles, then convert to moles again, go across the bridge and then convert to grams. Using our poem, balance the reaction, check. We have given to moles, there's that, mole to mole fraction, mole to the goal. So now I'm ready to set up my train tracks and figure out what my theoretical yield is. So I'm gonna start with my five grams of silicon dioxide. Put it over one. Grams of silicon dioxide come down. And then I'm gonna put moles of SiO2 at the top. One mole of silicon dioxide has a molar mass of 60.09. I get that number from the periodic table. Moles of silicon dioxide come down. Moles of silicon carbide come to the top. And then I'm gonna use my mole to mole fraction, my coefficients, one to one. Then 
mole silicon carbide comes down, grams of silicon carbide go to the top. Silicon carbide has a molar mass of 40.1. And I do the math, cancel my units, and I get 3.34 grams. Now that's my theoretical yield. So what I need to do now is I take my actual yield, which is 3.22 grams. I put it over my theoretical yield, which I have right here. I multiply that times 100. And I get 96.4%.